Yeah, great to have you with us here on DXB today. Thanks so much, Dean, uh, for your company and chalk it up entrepreneurial. There's another one for you because it's an entrepreneurial special today, talking homegrown talent. And we're now going to look at it from, well, perspective of the ages. Is homegrown talent and starting up here uh, a generational game? Is it a certain generation that are better than others? Well, not according to our next guest. We're going to be joined now by the founder of the Junior Gladiators Kidpreneurs program, Angela Sudis. Angela, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure. And also alongside you, one of your stars as well, one of the true gladiators out there, Zeba uh, Samnani, is also joining us as well. Thanks for joining Thank us. You. Thank you so much. So we're going to get on to you first and foremost, but Angela, let's start with you if we can. Um, I'm a massive fan of the Gladiators TV show, yes. so I'm looking oh. forward to the Gladiators <laughs> program here. Great. But um, why set it up? Why set up the platform in the first place? Are, 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 are younger generations these days more financially savvy than previous generations or not? I think um, in this region, for sure, because children are very much exposed to development. I mean, we live in a city that was built by a visionary. Mm. So I think for children here, I see that they have that visionary mindset. You know, they want to develop, they want to build something of their own. Um, they don't have the same barriers to insecurities that we have as adults. You know, I think as entrepreneurs, we're all walking around with this imposter syndrome. But children don't have that. And they're much more creative thinkers. So where we might think of an idea and then we list 10 reasons why that idea wouldn't work, children have already started implementing that. You know, they don't have that. So for me, I see children every day that are just doing amazing things in business. I think we often overlook just how amazing kids can be. There's a lot of focus on adult entrepreneurs, which is amazing, but children also need a spotlight too. Mm -hmm. um, Angela, I have a six-year-old at home and I'm fascinated by your Kidpreneurs program. Um, I would, l I mean, you say that, you know, the future generation looks very promising. They don't have the imposter syndrome that we adults do. I'm very happy for her to launch her own business and start chipping in uh, to the rent. I mean, <laughs> trust me. Is, is six too young? What is the minimum age to enroll in your program? Well, she would be most welcome. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think there's a limit on the age. I think what we try to teach children is to find something that they're passionate about. And we talked about that before with, you know, conversations about entrepreneurship. So if we can work with children to find what it is that you really love, what is your special talent? What is it that you really love to do? Then it doesn't feel like work for children. And one of the biggest, I guess, challenges for parents today is getting kids off these devices, off the iPad, off the phone, off the Xbox. And from my experience, when I see that children are engaged in something that they love, then it's not a battle to get them off these, off these devices. And entrepreneurship brings the whole family together. So our youngest kidpreneur is seven. She has a cookie business called Bob Rocks, and they've got their cookies into Spinney's and Waitrose and Kibson's and they're doing amazing. So I don't think there's any limit to how old the child should be. It's about finding something that they really love and feel passionate about. Incredible. I think I'm going to send my kids there as well. Good good job, Adji. Yeah, I think <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing I mean, if you. playing Roblox was a business, then my right? daughter would be a business. <laughs> <as well. laughs> but we have another one of your star students here on the sofa. So please tell me about what, you, what you've got on your hands at the moment. What, what is that? So I think we've all heard life flows where attention goes. And I, I always like to say that the way to keep your attention positive is by writing gratitude. I think there's a lot of things that surround us nowadays and it's so easy to get negative, to find the negative in the positive. So I think always writing down what really you're grateful for, the little two, three things at the end of the day, to sleep with the gratitude of knowing that goodness does surround you, no matter what is going on around the world. With COVID came a lot of negativity as well. People were easily focused on what bad goes on around. I think just writing down what good is also happening helps you just shift your mindset towards the positive. Wow, it's, it's more like a motivational speech right there, you know what I mean? That was amazing. Zeba, you also have these affirmation cards. Can you tell us about these, please? Yeah, so I'm sure we know what affirmations are. They are a set of positive statements. So these affirmation cards have 30 cards for 30 days. It's a deck for you to pick one up every morning, each with a different positive statement for you to just start your day with positivity. So I love to say I have the perfect products for you to start and end your day with positivity to ensure that, you know, even though if the day didn't go as you expected it, there's always something to be happy about. There's always something to look, look up to. And if maybe, um, you know, you need that push or you need that motivation, it definitely helps you. 
It's always a good sign when Ritesh is nodding. Okay. <laughs> when the angel investor is nodding, <laughs> you know, it's always yeah, good. It's, sign. Like it's a fantastic product, and the fact that you know somebody like Zeba, as young as she is, is is out there and building great products and trying to build a business around it's fantastic. And I always tell people the best way to learn is by doing. Right. So if I were to ask you, Zeba, what have you learned in the last few years while you've been doing this? Uh, definitely that age is just a number. I think till you don't put in the effort to do it, till you set your mind to do something, you can do it. I don't think there's any age that pulls you back. Um, my father is a business coach, so I've always seen him push people, start their businesses, grow it for them, help them out. Um, so when I see that, it really gives me the motivation to also do that. And you know, I think the moment you start your own business, you just implement so many things, you learn so many things on your own, and it really makes you realize you don't have to be a certain age to be able to do things in life. What I love about this is that you've got a great business. You've Thank got you. extraordinary ambassadors as well for yeah. that business. <laughs> well, there's a reason for that, right? <laughs> We're careful who we pick. No, we do. We have, a, we have a team. Zeba is part of our events team. So we have seven kidpreneurs who are in our events team. And when we do the live events, the children, they help run the events for us. So they're the ones doing the teachings, they're the ones motivating and guiding the other children. And at the end of the event, we have a panel discussion. So all the kidpreneurs are there and the children in the audience get to ask some questions about their journey, their struggles, their challenges. And it's the children that are inspiring the children. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's important because it's relatable. Yeah, yeah exactly that. Extraordinary. Mm -hmm. No, I love it. Angela, thank you very much for being thank here. Thank you for inviting me. Zeba, appreciate you being here as well. Mm -hmm. Um, part of the, the, the events that you do, do you do anything like an assault course like Gladiators? Well, I mean, <laughs> we do have some fun games and activities. Although, saying that, we do have a Taekwondo company oh. coming to our next event teaching some Taekwondo moves because that's all about resilience and being strong. So, in answer to your question, yes. <laughs> the physical <laughs> and the mental is uh, extremely needed. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, no, Pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Ash, what do you have for us? We've got the DXB and 60, do we? Yes, I have something for you, Ritesh. You've been sitting here oh, patiently oh. and now we're going to put you on the spotlight, oh, okay? <laughs> so this is DXB in 60. You need to answer as many questions as possible within 60 seconds. All right, are you ready? I'll try. The time is three, two, one, let's go. If you weren't working in the startup space, what would you be doing? A race car driver. Your first job? I was a data entry analyst in the library. If you could switch lives with a business icon, who would it be? Elon Musk, he has some really cool opportunities. Wouldn't we all? Uh, your motto in life and in work? Work hard, play hard. The most bizarre business idea you've come across? <laughs> I've heard of somebody trying to sell ice from icebergs in Iceland to the Middle East oh. as water. Your top tip to startup companies looking to get funded? Uh, be very clear about what it is that you're building and what it is you're looking for. A superpower you wish you had? Patience. The most used app on your phone? I think Instagram. It's a great way to reach out to people and stay connected with your friends. Top podcast recommendation? Diary of a CEO and Masters of Scale. Finally, why Dubai? Dubai is home. I've, I've, I've just seen it grow from you know, strength to strength and, and it's amazing what it's achieved in such a short amount of time. And I'm proud to be from here and I want to contribute to giving back as well and to helping it reach the next level. Fantastic. Ritesh, we can't thank you enough for Kirst co-hosting today. Thanks so much indeed. For thanks so much for having expertise me. Expertise to Zeba and of course to Angela. Thanks so much indeed thank for you. also uh, being on the show. Uh, show ain't done just yet. Plenty to look forward to. We'll be down at the Untold Festival. We'll have the best bits of that. We've got an extraordinary live performance and the P word. It's all about the prizes. Stay with us. <laughs>